Dear students, today we will learn a new topic. This process of white height by a glass prism. In the previous class, we have learned that a glass prism bends the light ray, refracts the light ray. But the fact is that a prism not only bends the light ray, but it also split the white light into seven different colors. As we know that white light is the constituent of seven different colors. But in actual white light is the constituent of millions of colors. So to make it simple, we take it as in seven different colors. Now, the question is that why does a light ray uh, split into seven different colors? Here, the reason is that the light travels in air in vacuums with a constant speed 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second. But inside the glass prisms, the speed did not travel to the same speed. The speed has been reduced here. Because of the change in the speed and the particles which are present in this prisms, this white light, which is a constituent of seven different colors, split into seven different colors. So this splitting of white lights into seven different colors is known as the dispersion of white light by a glass prism. Now, this seven different colors, this band of colors which we get is known as the spectrum. Uh, one example of natural spectrum is the rainbow. Now, if you go deeper inside, why do we get these seven different colors? Uh, this light, uh, which is uh, split into seven different colors, B, I, B, G, Y, O, R. Now, the red lights and the violets. See, all these different colors of light has a different different intensity. So different intensity means different wavelength. So the greater the intensity, the longer the wavelength. The less the lesser the intensity, the shorter the wavelength. Which means red light is a greater intensity and the violet is the less intensity. Which means the wavelength of the red light is longer than the uh, the violet's light. So what happens? The longer the, uh, the red light travels bending least and the violet light wave travels bending the maximum from the angle of incidence. So the red light bends a little bit and just pass away. This uh, violet light wave bends the most. So now we understand that a prism not only bends the light ray but also splits the light ray lights into seven different its constituents. And we also know why this white light is split into seven different colors. Now, Sir Isaac Newton was the first person to split the white light into seven different colors. He first he took the prisms and allowed a light beam of light ray to pass through the prisms and observe that this light ray is split into seven different colors. So again he tried to split the lights, colors of the lights more by using another prisms. But what he observed is that the light ray did not split anymore. So in the next second experiment what he did is that he placed the second identical prism inverted with respect to the first prisms and he observed that the seven different colors which uh, enter the second prisms which is placed in the inverted positions with respect to the first the other side of the second prisms the light ray emerges as a single light ray, white light so this shows that the prisms do not impart the color but further the white light is the component of seven different colors which is split by the prism. As I told you that rainbow is a natural spectrum where we can see a band of uh, seven different colors. Now, but how is this rainbow formed here? Look at this. Let's say this is a tiny drops of water and this tiny drops of water behaves, works like a prism. Here a prism splits the light into seven colors in the same manner here, a light ray entering this tiny drops of water and then split it into seven different colors. Now, splitting the light into seven different colors not only form the rainbow, there is some other factor is here. Let's see the factor. 
here after see the light ray refract here and then the light ray reflect here first first refract means the light ray bends second here number one number two reflect so refraction and the reflection both happen in a tiny drops of water because of this only the rainbow is formed and then the from the drops of tiny drops of water the splitted light emerges outside with different colors comes out splitting all the colors so this reflection inside the glass inside the drops of water is known as the total internal reflection and i hope and i hope you all know what is the total internal reflection see when the light enters changes its medium so this is rarer medium denser medium so when the light travels from one medium to the second medium the light bends but the bending of the lights depends on the angle of the incidence form here so if you increase the angle of incidence it keeps on bending more but if you increase more and more there is a certain uh, limits where this angle of incidence breaks and that particular angle is called a critical angle so if the angle of incidence is more than the critical angle so if you keep on increasing the incidence angle it will come to a point which we call it critical angle but if you increase the angle of incidence more than the critical angle then the light ray instead of refracting bending it will start with bouncing back so this bouncing back of light ray when the angle of incidence is greater than the critical angle so this is known as the total internal reflection so a rainbow is formed because of the refraction and the total internal reflection now our next topic is the atmospheric refraction so what do we understand by that atmospheric refraction now let's break it this atmospheric refractions into a simple way to understand so we understand that refraction means what bending right bending of light ray bending of light ray we call it refraction right now let's understand the atmospheric refraction as we know that our earth has an atmosphere and this atmosphere is made up of many layers the earth atmosphere is made up of many layers and the gases and the gas particles and the air particles many particles present in this layer and all the particles in this layer are not uh, constant are not same so some of the uh, see some has the density of the particles greater here some has less so the hotter the air the lesser the density means that layer is rarer the cooler the layer has a more density now when the light ray from the sunlight enter this atmosphere it suffer refraction okay it suffer refractions because of the density of the atmosphere some part of the layer has a less density some has a greater density so the earth atmosphere when the light enter is going to suffer refractions continuously before it reaches the earth and since the gas particles are not stable are not in one position they keep on moving so suppose this is a light ray hits the particles of the first layer and then going to bend like that and then it hits the another particles of the layer and then it going to bend like that so finally it going to reach the earth in such a way now this is the refractions which is suffered by the light ray continuously or multiple time let's make it very simple the concept is that 
The earth has an atmosphere which has uh, many layers and there are many gases and there are many particles. So when the light from the sunlight enters the earth atmosphere, it's going to refract them. So it's going to refract many times. Since the gases, particles is not one person, it keeps on moving, so light ray is going to refract like a zigzag. So twinkling of the stars, so this is like, see the person who is observing from the persons, uh, from the earth, this light ray, uh, to that person, he will see that the light ray or the twinkling of stars is one of the best examples. So it flickered. So this is called the flickering or the wavering of the light ray. So this is one of the natural phenomena of the atmosphere diffraction is the twinkling of the stars. So let's say this is a star, uh, this is a light ray coming from the star, continuously suffer refraction and that reaches the observer here. Now since the gas are moving around here, the apparent positions and the actual positions of the star lights keep on changing. So this makes the twinkling of the star to the observer. Now, let us study another natural phenomenon of the atmospheric refractions. As we know that twinkling of star is because of the atmospheric refractions, one more natural phenomenon is the early sunrise and the delayed sunset. So in the meantime, early sunrise and delay sunset. See, the, the very uh, best way to understand that early sunrise and delay sunset is that Early sunrise means we see the sunlight, the sun early than when it actually rises. Delay sunset means even though the sun set, still we are able to see the sun. That is known as the delay sunset. Now let us understand this phenomenon step by step. Now this is our earth. And let's draw a tangent here. Let's say this tangent is the horizon. And a person is standing here. Let's zoom that a person is standing here. Whatever below the horizons, downside is the below horizons, whatever above this tangent is the above the horizon. Now there are some phenomena like uh, the sunlight takes 8 minutes to reach the earth. Let's say this is a sun and the sunlight takes 8 minutes to reach this earth. But we see the sun 2 minutes earlier it actually rise. The sun is going to rise from the below the horizons to the above horizons. So below the horizons we are not will be able to see anything. Whenever it is above the horizons we will be able to see the things. Now what happens here? Early sunrise. This is our sun. And the sunlight goes in all possible directions. Let's say this, let's take an example and we know that our earth has a atmosphere. Because of the atmosphere, let's say one sun ray, a beam of sun ray rising from the horizon hits the earth atmosphere. What happens? The light ray is going to bend. With just the observer. What happened here? The observers, my brains, will extend the light ray, forming an image here of the sun.
and the time taken by the sun to travel from this actual to apparent position is 2 minutes. The sun is below the horizons but we see the sun 2 minutes early because of the light ray bending. So, the brain extend the light ray and form the image here. So, we see the sun 2 minutes early. So, this phenomenon is known as the early sunrise. Now, the second concept is the delay sunset, which means we see the sun 2 minutes even though the sun is set. Now, let's say the sun is already set here. The light ray comes from the sun here, hits the earth atmosphere and then suffer refraction. Then the light ray bends here, refract because of the atmospheric layers and the particles. The brain expand the light ray and see the sun here. Again, the time taken by the sun to travel from this apparent to the actual position is again 2 minutes. Why do we say sun is early? Because of the atmospheric refraction. So, we see sun 2 minutes early and we see the sun 2 minutes late even though it is set. So, this phenomenon is known as the early sunrise and the delay sunset. Scattering of light. Now, scattering of light is a phenomenon in which the light ray are deviated by the obstacles like the dust particles, the air molecules, the water vapors, etc. The particles which are present in the uh, atmosphere. So, basically scattering means what? In other, another way, uh, the particles, the fine particles which present in the atmospheric that molecules, water vapors, the tiny particles. So, when the light ray hits these tiny particles, it scattered the light ray everywhere, deviated the light ray. So, that is known as the scattering of the light. Some of the examples of scattering of light are the Tyndall effect and the color of the sky blue, the uh, sky, uh, color of the sky appears blue. All these natural phenomena because of the scattering of the light ray. Now, how is the light ray scattered? One of the examples is the Tyndall effect. What is the Tyndall effect? We know that Tyndall effect means the light ray scattered by the fine particles which are present in the surrounding. For example, if you are in a dark room which, is full, which has a full of smoke and let's say a light ray coming from a hole, the smokes are visible. The, the path of the light which enters the dark rooms, if you observe it, it becomes visible. So that phenomenon is known as the Tyndall effect. So what happens in that particular, particular phenomenon? When light enters in the dark rooms from this hole, the path of the light which travels is easily visible. Because that part, in that particular, there are some fine particles which are present. And that fine particles are smaller than the uh, wavelength of the light ray. So, the lesser the wavelength, the smaller the particles will be able to uh, scatter. But if the fine particles are small and the wavelength are greater, then it will not scatter. It will just pass away without happening anything. Now, let's understand the scattering of the light more precisely with the help of this Tyndall effect. Now, see here. If you take a container here, a glass container, Let's say we have a rectangular glass container. A rectangular glass container. And if you put some water here, and if you take a torch light here and allow the light ray to pass through, you will see the everything appears normal. You will not see the path of the light ray. Like the path of the light ray in a dark room. 
the light path of the light ray in the dark room is visible because the light rays are scattered by the tiny particles. But here, if you allow this, the tiny particles are known as the colloidal. Now, if you see here, in a water, in a normal water, when you allow this light pass through, the path of the light will not appear here. But in this water, if you mix some milk, if you mix some milk, what happens? The milk particles are larger in size than the particles which are present here. So now, this particles when the light, when a light ray is allowed to pass through these particles, now the light ray is going to scatter by this particle and then the path of the light ray will be visible. The scattering of this light by this colloidal particles is known as the Kindle effect. Now here we have studied that the scattering of the light by the colloidal particles is known as the Kindle effect. The second thing here, why is the color of the sky blue? The same phenomenon, scattering of the light. Now, in, in the previous class we studied that the earth atmosphere is composed of many layers which has many fine particles. Molecules, air molecules, dust particles, water vapor particles, many particles are there. Now, when the light ray enters the earth atmosphere, you see that the red colored light is a greater intensity because a longer intensity uh, wavelength. So, and the violet has the least, and the blue violets are the least wavelength light ray. What happens here? So, when the light enters, since the fine particles which are present are very tiny than the uh, wavelength. So, the wavelength is greater than the fine particles. So, the light ray goes without any scattering. Now, the fine particles will be able to scatter the less wavelength, the light ray which has a less wavelength, which is the violet indigo and the blue. So, the blue light is scattered most. That's why the sky appears blue. Now, as I told you, the red light has a greater wavelength, so it will travel in a maximum speed and the violet has a minimum, uh, has a less wavelength, so it will travel in a minimum speed. So, this has a less wavelength, less light. That means, as per this Violet has to be scattered the most. That means the sky is supposed to be appear violet instead of blue. But we see the sky blue. Why? The reason is that our eyes sensitive cells, rods and cones. One for the uh, intensity of the light, one for the colors of the object. So our eye cells are more sensitive to the blue instead of violet. So that's why the sky appears blue, not violet. Stay home, stay home.